direct from Liverpool, the home of the 2023 Eurovision Song Contest. This is Pete from Eurovisi. Let's seize the day and go to Slovenia. So this year, Slovenia are being represented by another band, uh, this time Joker Out, with the song Carpe Diem, which is Latin for Seize the Day. Now, I really liked their effort last year. I thought uh, Disco by LPS was a really good song, and I was disappointed that it didn't qualify for the final, and even more disappointed that it actually came uh, in last place with 15 points. Last year's selection, uh, EMA, went on for weeks and weeks and had uh, so many different compartments to it and so many different juries and voting. And this year, Slovenia have done away with all of that and gone straight to an internal selection. And at the end of all of that, they've gone with Joker out and their song. So I have heard it before, but to create the illusion of pretense that I've not heard it before, I'm going to stick these headphones on, listen to the song again, and then talk about it like I've never heard about it before. So... This is the Slovenian entry for this year's Eurovision Song Contest. The band is called Joker Out and the song's called Carpe Diem. Well, that's great. I think that's a really great song. Um, as always, um, I write quite a lot down in felt at pen because I'm a small child. Um, the thing I'm going to focus on today is what it immediately reminded me of when I first heard it, which I don't know if you can see because I've written in really small writing, but uh, Hard to Beat by uh, Hard Fi um, reminds me a lot of that. Um, different song, but in terms of the style of it, it really reminds me of that. I think it's it's great. You've got that wonderful sort of full band opening. Um, and then you get into the first verse and it's just the bass guitar carrying the whole thing with him singing and the audience are clapping along and they're really, really up for it. Um, now, whether that's because they've been told to do it or because they're really enjoying themselves, who knows, but it's, this is a real, a real party of a song. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's an enjoyable listen from start to finish. And the audience, as you can hear, are really up for it. Um, like I say, honestly, I've been told to, but I think this will go down really well in a 6,000 strong arena in Liverpool. Um, the staging, I think the camera works quite nice. It's very, uh, it's very, Again, like I'm any sort of expert, but the camera work on the uh, the reveal of the song video is really crisp. It's really clean. Uh, you get really good shots of the singers and stuff. Um, so I think that's done really well. How they're obviously performing in a very confined space. How do you translate that across to a much bigger stage? Um, I don't know. There's a there's a sort of guitar riff bit between the chorus and the second verse. Uh, where I think you've got a great opportunity for some sort of amazing lighting or I don't know, do we even use pyros at Europe anymore? You don't need pyros. Um, but you could get some really you know, incredibly good lighting show as he does that. That really sort of guitar riff is is really well performed. This is a, it's a real shame that in these days of Eurovision, um, this couldn't be performed live with the guitars playing and the drums playing for real because that would be absolutely outstanding. Um, but as a backing track, um, I think they've done an absolutely excellent job. It, it sounds really, to my amateur ear, it sounds absolutely um, brilliant. I think it's good that they've sung in Slovenian. Um, I think that adds a nice little bit of authenticity to it. Um, I, I couldn't get a translation of the words on YouTube, so I don't quite know what they were, uh, well, I don't know at all what they were saying, but I think um, he's, he's sung it really well. And I don't think the fact that he's sung it in Slovenian is a, is a disadvantage to it. Um, it's got a real sort of again if I knew what the words were it would be it would have a real sing along type song there. It's just a real sort of I don't know, sort of late nineties, um, early two thousands um type sort of feel. So it's not Brit pop, is it? Because that's a bit too late, but that sort of indie band, um again, not quite Kaiser Chiefs. Um but again, it's that sort of style of song, that sort of song that you know, it would it would happily appear on an NME compilation album uh, for anyone who remembers remembers uh, the NME, um, which we don't because it's just me. Um, shout out to the backing singers. Um, they do a great job and I hope they sing live. And I know you can put the vocals on the track now if you want, but I hope they sing live because their sort of high sort of falsetto type voice is really, you know, it's really impressive. And I hope they sing live because um, I think that will really add to the song. Um, I, I I really like it. There's probably a couple of things to think about it. Um, it. It ends very quietly. And actually what I noticed was that it's it's a two minute 56-ish song, but around about two minutes 33, 
it goes to that sort of quiet bit. And I thought what was going to happen was that they were going to, you know, strum very quietly and sing very quietly and then build up to a sort of big da -da 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 type ending. And they don't. He just very slowly fades it out. It's a very subdued ending. Now, I I don't know if I would have preferred a sort of bigger ending um, or, or not, but um, or actually, does it slowing it, not slowing it down, but making it much quieter, just almost fading away, does that make it a much more powerful ending. It depends on on how it's staged and things, I suppose. But that's one of the sort of, I suppose, criticisms I've got of it is it just sort of feels like it just sort of gives up towards the end and just sort of ends. But I think it's a, a, a great song. The other thing to consider is the comparison between this and Latvia. Now, Latvia have sent a band called Sudden Lights and they performed at their national final and there were lots of guitars and drums and a man uh, walking around the stage singing. And I think the similarities start and end there. They're both just male bands doing a sort of similar uh, style of them, but they're not all that similar. So this is a good, fun, jump up and down song that the audience, if it gets behind it, they will get behind it. Sudden Lights' song for Latvia is, is very good, and I like that one as well, and we'll, we may review that at some other point, but it's a much more serious sounding song, and I think it's in three, four... Da, da. I think it's in 3-4 time rather than 4-4, but I'm no expert um, and I have to listen to it properly to make that assumption. But don't think just because you've got two young, handsome um, bands playing guitars and singing that they're similar because they're not. Um, and I, I think this is a this is a much more... This is the one I would listen to. I, I always use the test of would I listen to this... In, would, I, would I start that again? I always use that test of would I listen to this song on a summer's day in my car, and this is the one I would listen to. This is the one that, if I was a teenager again, I'd be I'd be getting ready for a night out, listening to it as I bath myself in cheap aftershave and uh, go out in a shirt that my mum's ironed. Uh, <laughs> uh, but um, enough about my traumatic teenage years. Uh, compared to Latvia, which is a great song, but it, that's more in the sort of Star Sailor light sort of mode. It's the sort of song I'd probably listen to. Um, if I'd had a bad day at work with a whiskey in my hand. Um, so they're very different styles of song, and I think the audience can get behind both. Will it qualify? Well, it's in semi-final two. Um, semi-final two, as we've said before, is generally considered the the weaker one, but I'm not sure that's all that true anymore. I, I think that's probably what people thought when there were gaps in the schedule, but we've, we've got all the songs now, and I, I don't know. I, I can't, you know, can I find five or six songs that... Um, that won't qualify. It's getting more and more difficult for me to decide that, I think. Um, will people pick up the phone for it because it's a televote? I think they will. Um, I, I think, you know, it's a toe tapper and it is a jump up and down sort of fun sort of song. Like in, even as I'm saying this in the back of my head is da -da 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 -da. Um, and I think it's shot beautifully and it's staged beautifully. And I think if you compare it to LPS last year, um, disco was very, was very I always felt it was as much as I enjoyed the song and felt that the things like the bass guitar was very good the, the staging of it felt a bit stilted whereas here you've got this sort of static position of drummer and guitarists but you can you can make the camera work work around the artists to, to make it much better a lot of it's going to depend on how it's staged but I do think people will pick up the phone for it and vote um if it qualifies for the final how will it do then well that you know, obviously the jury's have got a big role to play here, and there's so many good songs this year. In a way, I always feel that so much attention is given to Sweden and Norway, and even the United Kingdom this year, um, obviously because we're the hosts and we've got a very good song, that the songs that are just well-crafted, well-performed songs that you listen to in your car every day, like Latvia, like Slovenia, like Malta, they they they're all excellent songs, and I you know and I like and I will listen to all of them, but you just know that the publicity machine isn't there for them as much as it is for some of the other songs going on, um, and I think it's a, and I think that's a real shame because it'd be I, I'd love a song like this to win Eurovision I, because I think we need to you know a problem about that I was really into indie when I was a, a teenager. Um, and still am to a certain extent. Um, it, I just think it'd be nice to see this sort of song 
you know, a well-constructed, well-performed band winning a song without dancing and without light shows and without giant killer LCDs that may or may not hang off the arena roof. Um, but I'm, I'm ranting. Um, I really enjoy it. I, I think it's a great song. I feel like I've said this about a lot of the songs now. Um, I hope it qualifies. I think it deserves to be in the final Saturday. I think Latvia deserves to be in the final on Saturday as well. Um, I think Malta deserves to be in the final on Saturday as well. Um, but we're talking about Slovenia, and and I and I genuinely, it's a thumbs up for me. I think it's great. Um, that's my iPad going off. Good. Um, <laughs> professional from start to finish. Um, what do you guys think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, comment in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Euroversity, where we give you commentary and opinion direct from Liverpool, the home of the 2023 Eurovision Song Contest. I'm Pete from Euroversity, and I'm going to say I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.